Heads up, and let's add some custom stuff to the HUD. Alright, we found us back in Jones more, and in this tutorial, we're gonna be adding custom HUD elements to, well, the player's HUD. So, very exciting indeed, and this actually is more straightforward than you might think. So this is, of course, the fourth part in our Thirst series, where we basically add a Thirst system to Minecraft. Now, this is sort of dependent on all of the Thirst system, but I think that with enough Java knowledge, you should be very much able to understand what is going on with the HUD. It's actually not that crazy. So for this, what we'll do is we'll make a new package called Client, and then inside of there, we're going to make a new Java class, and this is going to be the Thirst HUD overlay. Now, this is going to be a very interesting class indeed. First of all, I'm going to copy over to resource locations. Now, those are the resource locations of both the empty thirst PNG as well as the filled thirst PNG. Those are under the textures folder in a new directory called thirst. And then I'm just going to copy those over. Those are, of course, also available to you or download in the description. Now, what do we then need? Well, then we need a public static final I GUI overlay, this one right here, called hut underscore thirst in our case. And this is going to be equal to, and I believe if I start typing in a GUI, you can see it already suggests stuff to us. So I can just press the tab key to autocomplete. I'm going to make curly brackets over here and end it with a semicolon. And then everything that is happening inside of here is basically the stuff that gets rendered. So let's start first and foremost by adding a two integers over here. So we have the X and the Y values. Now, why do we have those? Well, basically, we always want to make sure that everything we draw on the GUI is dependent on both the width and the height, the scale width and the height of the screen. Otherwise, when you, you know, change the size of the screen, then actually the sizes change as well and where it is placed. So that is a very important thing. Then we're going to, well, basically copy over this one right here. So this is going to be the three render system calls, set shaders, just a, you know, position shader. We're setting the color to just 111, that's okay. And then we're setting the texture to the empty thirst texture. And how then, how are we then going to draw this texture? Well, we're drawing it like this. So we're basically drawing 10 of those textures with the GUI component that blit call, passing in the post stack, and then basically the X and Y coordinates. Then 00, 0 is the offset, and then 12, 12 is the size of what we're drawing, and then 12, 12 is also the size of the image that we're drawing. Even though our images are 16 by 16, I basically, you know, shrink them down to 12 by 12, because that just makes them a little bit nicer to look at. And this will draw all of the empty thirst vials, basically, right? So we have a vial there, and it's going to draw all of them. Now, if we then want to draw the filled one, what we then do is, well, first of all, we set the texture to the filled texture, right? It'll be fairly self-explanatory here. And then we also have a for loop. However, here we're basically actually checking whether or not the player has particular thirst. Now, what you're going to see is that, oh, this client thirst data actually does not exist yet. Now, in theory, we could also get the capability via the player by using Minecraft client and then getting the local player. However, that is not actually quite what I had in mind. For the time being, what I basically want to do is, well, not just not draw anything right here because the client thirst data at the moment is not created yet. Now we could create it, but it's still not going to be synchronized because this is literally what I said, right? The synchronization doesn't happen yet because that is actually something we need. We still need a custom packet for that. And we're going to do that after we've seen the overlay for the first time. So how do we now register this? Well, it's actually fairly straightforward. We just want to go into our events package, client events, and this happens in the client modbus events. So I'm just going to copy over the method here. This is very, very straightforward. Just to register GUI overlays, you can see thirst hot overlay, hot thirst over here. We're just going to call this thirst, and this is going to be registered above all else. So it's going to basically be drawn over everything else. That is all that we need. This goes into the register GUI overlays event, and now the custom hot element should be shown. So let's, for the first time, go into the game and see if it works. All right, and we find ourselves in Minecraft again, and you can already see the vials over here now. As you can clearly see as well, the thirst does not correspond to well, what is drawn there, because the vials are only the empty vials, right? We're not drawing any filled ones, but this is the first part of drawing something on the screen. And you can also see if I, you know, change the size of the screen over here, that they basically stay in the same place, roughly speaking. So that is honestly really cool, and the first part of adding the custom HUD. Now, as already teased, the second part basically includes a, well, the client thirst data. So we're going to go into our client package, right click new Java class. This is the client thirst data. And this is going to be a, well, basically a roughly static class, which is has, which has the private static int 
player thirst. And we're just going to have two static methods over here, static void set, which is going to be the int thirst. And this is just going to do client thirst data dot player thirst equals to thirst. And then we'll also have the public static int get player thirst. And here we're just going to return player thirst. Now, why can we do this with a static class over here or with static integers? Well, because this one will only ever be available on the client. So it's basically going to be, well, unique for each client. That is why we can actually do this in this way. And how do we now synchronize this? Well, for this, we actually will need a new packet. Let's just copy over the drink water packet here. And this is actually going to be the thirst data sync s to c packet because this time we're actually sending something from the server to the client very interesting indeed and here what we actually want to do is we want to have a private final int called thirst this is actually the data we want to send from the server to the client and this then also what we need to add right here so we need to add the thirst right here we want to say this dot thirst equals the thirst passed into the constructor and what we also want to do is right here we want to say this dot thirst equals above dot read int so we're actually now reading additional data from our byte buffer and here we also have to write it so we have to say write int and then writing thirst inside of it so the general idea is that the two bytes method over here always has to be the same well byte buffer that we're reading out so if we write one int right here we have to read one int out as well that is very important otherwise it's not going to work and now here let's just delete all of this basically because now we are no longer on the server, but here we are on the client. We also don't need this method over here. And here we literally only want to do the following. We only want to do client thirst data dot set thirst. And because this is client only, because this is ever only called on the client, we should be totally fine. So we're just sending the client thirst data to this thirst over here. Let's then also register it so we can duplicate this once again. And we're going to call this the thirst data sync s to c and we're just going to call all of this and now this is actually play to client very important that we change the network direction here incredibly important so keep that in mind as well another question is well where do we want to synchronize the well data let's just do this inside of the capability over here so mod messages dot send to player we're going to send a new thirst data sync right here we're just going to say thirst dot get thirst so this is the actual amount and then as a second parameter for the send to player, we just pass in the player. And that should be pretty much all that we need. We're going to do the same thing in the get capability call over here, right? That that also synchronizes it. And that should pretty much be all that we need. Now, there's one more thing where we actually do need this. And that is in the mod event class. So let's just copy over the method over here. So this is the on player join world method. Let's just import the mod messages. And then this is actually called thirst data sync s to c over here. Because this basically also synchronizes the thirst first time the player joins the world, right? This is, of course, also sensible so that when the player joins the world, the HUD actually displays the correct amount of, well, thirst, basically. Right, and now we just need to go into our HUD overlay over here. Just change this one back to, well, actually getting the thirst over here. And now it's going to draw a filled thirst vial for every thirst that the player has. Basically, if the player has full thirst, then it's going to have 10 filled vials. Otherwise, there will be anything in between 0 and 10 filled vials. So that's the general idea here. And of course, the you know x and y coordinates are the same as here. I've already calculated them beforehand so that I know roughly where this is going to be placed. Highly recommend just playing around with them a little bit in your own time when you want to render something else on the overlay. And I almost forgot in the mod events when we actually subtract the thirst right here instead of sending a message let's actually just send the packet here as well let's just do the same as this one right here so this is not player this is event.player there you go let's cast this to a server player there you go and that should pretty much be all that we need here so that we also synchronize this when the thirst is subtracted now a great thing that you could do to basically well expand this system as i said this is not the most robust system this really is just an example of how to use all of this what you can do is you could in your player thirst right here you could probably add the add a player to the add thirst and sub thirst methods and then synchronize it via that for the time being we're going to be fine like this this should all work as always, of course, the code will be available to you in the description below, GitHub repository and individual gist as well. But now everything should be working. So let's go into the game and see if it works. 
All right, so we find ourselves in the menu of Minecraft because I don't want this to change, but you can already see, you know, filled vials over here. And, you know, as we see and something gets subtracted, you can see in instead of actually outputting it, we can just see that it basically, well, subtracts over here. And if I, you know, fill up and drink stuff, then it also works. I mean, it is absolutely amazing. We can see now it subtracts again. Actually, you know, random as I've said, so it can sometimes happen very, very fast. But overall, still really freaking awesome. Everything synchronizes. A completely custom hot element for your thirst. Absolutely amazing. And that's pretty much how easy everything is. And that pretty much concludes the Thirst System, you know, sub-series for Forge over here. Like I said, the actual th system itself is definitely not for use in your mod. This really is just a very, very good, you know, example, hopefully, understandable example on how everything interrelates, right? How the networking works with the custom keybinds, works with the custom HUD overlay and stuff like that. So hopefully this is going to, well, help you make your own custom HUD overlays, custom systems, all of that. So that would be really freaking awesome. Awesome. But anyway, that will be it for this tutorial right here. Hope you found this useful and you learned something new and I'll see you all in the next tutorial. So yeah.